Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Missile Command for the Atari 2600. This was a 1981 port of Dave Toyer's 1980 classic arcade machine developed by Rob Fulop. At least I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, the game features Atari's second ever documented and acknowledged Easter egg after the one in Adventure. If you fire all your missiles on level 13 without scoring any points, Rob Fulop's initials will appear in place of one of the cities. So, nice little bit of uh, self-crediting going on there. The Atari 2600 version also introduced a narrative that was not present in the original arcade version, but which did find itself into several of the other ports. And said narrative would end up adapted into a hilariously cheesy War of the World style drama LP as well, which is well worth seeking out if you ever get the chance. It is uh, hilarious and brilliant in an awful sort of way. Anyway, let's go play Missile Command for the Atari 2600. Okay, here we are once again with Atari Flashback Classics. And today it's time for Missile Command on the Atari 2600. As always, let's begin with a look at the manual. Missile Command promises 34 video games and includes instructions in five languages. And a special feature. This game program TN contains additional versions for young children or games journalists. Um, here we are. Your commanding orders. Ooh, I can just about read that. A little bit blurry scan again. Aliens from the planet of Krytol have begun an attack on the planet Zardon. The Krytonians are warriors out to destroy and seize the planet of Zardon. Zardon is the last of the peaceful planets. The Zardonians are skillful and hard-working people. Their cities are built up and rich in resources. It is truly a planet void of crime and violence. Zardon has built a powerful defense system. Several anti-ballistic missile bases have been established within the cities of Zardon. The Zardonians are ready for this attack and are prepared to fight to save their cities. As base commander, it is your responsibility to protect and defend six cities on the planet of Zardon. The Crytonians have begun firing interplanetary ballistic missiles. They are aiming at your cities and missile bases. Your only defense is to fire back with anti-ballistic missiles. But watch out, the Crytonians are sly. They also have cruise missiles. Cruise missiles look like satellites, but they are just as deadly as the interplanetary ballistic missiles. Use your anti-ballistic missiles, ABMs, to stop the enemy before your happy and harmonious planet is destroyed. Now, as I say, um, that narrative was not in the arcade original version of Missile Command. Um, Dave Toyer, the original designer of the arcade version, uh, originally intended it to be... Um, sort of a simulation of an attack on various Californian cities and indeed he got so into the idea of this that legend has it anyway that he suffered from nightmares of these cities being destroyed while he was developing the game um, but yeah for the console versions and various other versions of, of Missile Command around the place it was sort of retrofitted with this story here and as I said in the intro there is an absolutely remarkable record out there um, that kind of dramatizes that whole story with songs and pieces of music and so on and it's just the most incredible awful piece of 80s nonsense you will ever experience i highly recommend listening to it all the way through because it's just terrible in the most wonderful way um, you can probably find it on youtube if if i happen to find a link i will pop one in the description or in a card or something um, but yeah do do seek it out for yourself if you're not sure at Missile Command, we have seen on this series before in its arcade incarnation. The 2600 version works pretty much as you'd expect, um, aside from the fact that we only have the one missile base instead of the three we have in the arcade original. Um, you score points as you go through. Uh, you increase the amount of points that you get uh, the further through the game you are. So every two levels, you basically uh, increase your score multiplier up to wave 13, which is the most difficult wave in the uh, game cartridge and that is also the one where the easter egg is if you happen to uh, get that far which i almost certainly will not so there are 34 game variations in this games 1 through 17 are one player and whoops and games 18 through 34 are two player games and games 17 and 34 are for young children uh, which means that they're very easy so some game variations have fast target control and some have slow target control. This means that you may move the cursor fast or slow around the screen. Because you use the joystick to move the target control, the slower it moves, the more control you will have, but the fewer number of targets you'll be able to hit. So this is basically um, 
making up for the fact that the arcade original used a trackball so you could be very responsive and quick to move around the screen in this you've got a digital joystick and so it's either slow or fast basically and then other options you've got uh whether um enemy cruise missiles are smart or dumb uh you can choose your starting wave and that's about it basically so it claims 34 video games but they're all whoops they're all the same video game um just in slightly different levels of difficulty so we won't run through all of them today because there's no point but let's hop in one player start at level one dumb cruise missiles slow target that's as good a place to start as any so we hit game reset and off we go so there's our target is the white flashing cursor in the middle of the screen and in traditional missile command fashion in order to destroy the missiles you have to catch the flashing dot at the end of the lines in an explosion in order to destroy it and once you've got rid of all of the missiles in a particular wave you get a bonus for your remaining cities and your remaining missiles and you then move on now as i say one key difference uh in this version from the arcade original is you've only got the one missile base to fire missiles from uh, and to make up for that uh, you have three times the amount of ammunition you do in the arcade version you'll see down in the lower left corner there's two black squares uh, those are basically extra silos worth of missiles that you have and the current silo of missiles you've got you can see actually displayed on your missile base in the middle of the screen there so when that runs out one of the black squares will disappear and that's using up some of um another set of your missiles so in that sense you don't really lose anything for not having the three different missile bases and in fact it's a lot easier to keep track of things if you're only firing from one missile base instead of three uh, it's for that reason that I, I tend to find that i prefer the console versions of missile command to the arcade original the arcade original is legendary of course but i just find firing from the three bases just a little bit too much to deal with along with the the speed that the game in general moves along at particularly once you get past the first couple of stages but aside from the um the single base thing this is a very authentic feeling port of missile command So it's lower resolution than the arcade machine, obviously. But it, it does look very authentic. It uses the same colour scheme. It uses very similar sound effects. It feels very true to the original. And so Atari 2600 owners who picked up a copy of this would have been very pleased with this, I'm sure. Because the sort of the sort of authenticity of that's the sound of me getting an extra city by the way yeah because the kind of authenticity of arcade ports on atari 2600 varied very heavily according to how complex and in some cases old the games that the programmers were attempting to adapt are Yeah, this is one that 2600 owners would have been very happy with, I'm sure. And I know this is one that's still a very popular port today. You've probably heard me talking about the uh, Evercade retro gaming platform on the Moe Gamer podcast or on MoeGamer.net. Um, one of the Atari collection cartridges on there has this 2600 version of Missile Command on it. And that's proven very, very popular with the Evercade community. There's been lots of sort of competition for high scores and so on and everyone reliving their memories of this game oh dear it's going very badly all of a sudden i 
I think... I think we're in trouble. Yeah. That's the end of that. Yeah, you also don't get the iconic the end ending in quite the same way. You do get the vaguely migraine inducing flashing screen. But there you go. Let's select a couple of games and see where we are. Let's have smart cruise missiles and fast target. This is game four. So now you can move around the screen more quickly. This makes it a little trickier to be completely accurate. But then you don't need to be super accurate in this game anyway. As long as you catch the missile in the explosion, you're all good. So it's all a matter of taste, really. There isn't a right way or a wrong way to play Missile Command on the 2600. You just pick which game variation you find the most enjoyable. Stick with that and try and set some high scores. Oops. But yeah, this is a good example of uh, something I talked about a bit when we looked at Millipede. Which is that if you pick Atari Flashback Classics up, you might wonder what the point of having several different versions of various games is. And the truth is that each of those versions have their own very distinct feel about them. This game feels a bit different to play to the arcade original. It's certainly easier to control than the arcade version of this, because the the arcade version in Atari Flashback Classics, you may recall, um, makes use of the analog stick to simulate the trackball, but it's very, very twitchy. And quite tricky to be accurate with. Whereas the digital controls for this are much easier to handle. So, I mean, again, it's all a matter of taste. If you enjoy this one, you play this one. If you enjoy the 5200 version, which we'll look at next time, you play that one. If you enjoy the arcade original, you play that one. It's nice to have choice. Choice is never a bad thing. Well, aside from analysis paralysis, of course, but, you know... You can learn to live with that. Whoops. So we've got the smart missiles now. Those are the ones that will actually actively try and dodge your attacks. Bonus city for me. Oh no. Disaster strikes. Does get very tricky at this stage. We're hanging in there, eh? Hanging in there. And the fact that you're, you're multiplayer has increased so much by this point means that you're more likely to be able to score some extra cities but that does depend on you having enough stuff left over at the end of a stage to score sufficient bonus points or indeed to score enough during the level Oh dear, I think we're in trouble. Oh no! Got over 20,000. That's enough for one city. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, now it's all over. <laughs> I 
Yeah, we're not going to score enough by the end of the stage to get another bonus, I don't think. It's the end! Boom! Alright, so what other options have we got? Uh, so you can start at level 7. Let's try that. Oh, that's basically where we got to, so we can sort of pick up where we left off. Oops, last one already. Good job. And another one. It's really got to get the hang of anticipating where those missiles are going to land. Going a little bit better. Now we're onto the stage we didn't get past before. Thank heavens for damn cruise missiles this time. No, no. Didn't stop them taking that city out, they did it. I believe we've reached the ceiling of my missile command skill level. Three cities to go, and they're all about to die. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's that. What is the latest level you can start at then? Start at level 11. Start at level 15. So it said 13 was the highest you could go. Hmm. Well, let's try level 15. This won't end badly at all. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, no human can play this. What? How is how is this possible? Game over. <laughs> Dear me. Um, as I mode seventeen is the children's version. Just for comparison's sake, let's just take a quick look at what that version offers us. So you have a very slow moving target, you have extremely slow missiles, and I think you don't have any um, cruise missiles in this version either. So this is a good way to learn the game, but I guess after a few rounds of this you'll probably hunger for something just a little bit more challenging. But like I say, it's, it's a good way of, of learning the basic controls of teaching someone how to play in fairly non-threatening circumstances. They can hone their skills, get accustomed to how it all works. And then you can let them loose on level 15. Anyway, I think you get the idea for that. So, let's just hit the power. Um, I'm going to have one more go at level 15, just because that was unbelievably ridiculous. One more try. And then we'll wrap up for today. Here we go. Bring it on. Missed. Missed. 
it, it's, it's, it's just too fast. It's just not humanly possible. Oh god, and so many cruise missiles. I made it through! I made it through one level. Now, I mean, really, all I need to do is protect my own base and that one city now. It's like the... Oh dear, it's all over. <laughs> I was going to say, as long as you can keep at least one city up, the irradiated wastelands around that you have uh, created don't really matter all that much, but there you go. Yes, if you want a stiff challenge, then try game number 13, level 15 of Missile Command on Atari 2600. <sighs> I think that's quite enough of that for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. has been sighted approaching our planet through Stargate 19. The battle is upon us. Be brave and true, and the victory shall be ours. We are Sergeant.